Hello everybody, this is Pastor Green. We're doing another Bible study, 1 Kings chapter 16. If you'd like me to come speak at your church, or if you have any questions, you can email me at g-o-d-s-o-h-m-a-n at gmail.com. So we ended uh, chapter 15. This is in the verse 33. In the third year of Asa, the king of Judah, begat Basha, the son of Aja, to reign over Israel in Terzah. Twenty and four years, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the ways of Jeroboam, and in his sin, whereas he made Israel to sin. All throughout the Bible, you're going to see Basha, he's one of the kings. And you can see over here, there's Asia in the southern kingdom, and ba ba Basha in the, in the northern kingdom. And First Kings 16 says, Then the word of the Lord came to Je Jehu, the son of Hanah, against Basha saying, For as much as I exalted over thee, over the dust, and made thee prince over my people, Israel, and has walked in the ways of Jeroboam, and has made my people Israel to sin, to provoke me to anger with her sins. You can see here, Jay used also in the Bible a lot. Jehu the son, the son of Hanah, Jehu the prophet, Jehu the son of Nishi. And you can see here also Jehu's here as well. Behold, I will take away the prosperity of Basha and the prosperity of his house, and I will make thee house like the houses of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Him that dieth of Basha the city shall the dogs eat, and him that dieth of his in the field shall the fowls of the air eat. So what they would do is they would take people and they would just throw them in these pits, these open air pits. Animals would come down there and feast on the dead bodies. Birds would come down, insects, things like that. And you can see here, uh, we talk about the third and fourth generations. The Nicolaes, their fathers, third and fourth generations. You know, a lot of times what happens is people will do certain things and then their kids will see what they're doing and follow suit. Now the rest of the acts of Basha and what he did in his might, are they not written in the books of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So Basha slept with his fathers and was buried in Terzah, and Eliah his son reigned in his stead. You can see Basha, you can see Eliah, and again, Basha is all written in the Bible. And this is what I was talking about here before, if you look at Jer Jer Jeremiah. It says the pit where Ishmael had cast all the dead bodies of the men who had slain because of Galdal, which was in Asia, the king had made for the fear of Basha, the king of Israel. It says here, and also the hand of the prophets Jehu, the son of Hanah, came the word of the Lord against Basha and against his house, even for all the evil they did in the sight of the Lord, and provoking him to anger with the works of his hands, and being like the house of Jeroboam, and because he killed him. In the twentieth and sixth year of Asia, the king of Judah began, Eliah the son of Basha, to reign over Israel in Terzah in two years. And his servant, Zamari, the captain of half the chariots, conspired against him. He was in Tertia, drinking himself drunk at the house of Urza, Arza, steward of his house in Tauza. And Zamari went and smote him and killed him. In the twentieth and seventh year of Asia, king of Judah, and reigned in his stead. You can see here Asia in the southern kingdom and Basha in the northern kingdom. And you can see Zemurai. And it came to pass when he began to reign, as soon as he sat on the throne, and he slew all the house of Basha, he left of not the pit, one that pissed against the wall. Neither was his kinsfolk nor his friends. Thus did Zemurai destroy all the house of Basha, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke against Basha by Jehu the prophet. For the sins of Basha and the sins of Elias' son, which were they sinned, I wish they made Israel to sin, in providing the Lord God of Israel to anger with their vanities. Now the rest of the acts of Elijah and all that he did, are they not written in the books of the Chronicles, the king of Israel? In the twentieth and seventh year of Asia, king of Judah, did Zemri reign seven days in Tertia, and the people were encamped against Gibeon, and belonged to the Philistines. And the people that were encamped heard of Zemri had conspired, and has also slain the king. Wherefore all Israel made Umari the captain of his host, king over Israel that day of the camp. 
And again, you can see here, here's Asa, here's Zemurai, and uh, Omari took over. And Omari went to Gibeon and all of Israel with him, and they besought Tirzah. And it came to pass when Zemurai saw that the king was taken, that he went to the palace of the king's house, and burned the king's house over him with fire and died. For his sins which he sinned in doing evil in the sight of the Lord, and walking in the ways of Jeroboam, and his sin which he did to make Israel to sin. Now the rest of the acts of Zemurai and his treason that he wrought, how they got rid of the books of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. When the people of Israel divided into two parts, half the people followed Timonai, the son of Ginnath, to make him king, and half followed Omri. But the people that followed Omri prevailed against the people that followed Timon, the son of Ginnath. So Timon died, and Omri reigned. And you can see here, there was this big struggle between who's going to be king in a small area. In every little line, you can see how long that they reigned. And the northern kingdom had so many issues that people kept trying to jockey to be the king, so they didn't live very long sometimes. In the 20 and first year of Asa, king of Judah, became Amorite to reign over Israel. Twelve years, six years, he reigned here at Tazarim, and he bought the hill of Samaria to Shimmer, two talents of silver, and built on the hill to call the name of the city which he built after the name of Shimmer, owner of the hill of Samaria. But Omri brought evil in the eyes of the Lord, and did worse than all that were before him. And he walked in the ways of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and in a sin wherever they made Israel to sin, to provide the Lord God of Israel to anger with their vanities. And you can look here, it was a divided kingdom. Israel, which was a northern kingdom, every one of them was evil. In Judah, it was about half and half. There's Jeroboam, there's Nebat, there's Basha, there's Eliah, there's Zemurai, Amri, and there's Ahab. See, Grandpa was a drunk. Son is a drunk. Grandson's going to be a drunk. A lot of times people will follow these generational things where they see what their father does and they follow with them. But obviously we can break that, but some people don't choose to. You know, I looked up how much does alcohol cost. And it says here that a uh, you know, six pack is like five. 79, uh, 12 pack is about 1050. You know, I think the stupid is the stupid does, and that's pretty stupid to buy alcohol, but people like to do it. Now, let's tip here cigarettes. If you buy cigarettes every day for 50 years at 603 a pack, after 50 years, you're going to spend $110. Two packs would be $220. Three packs would be $330. So, it says that today the average pack of cigarettes costs around $7. Although it can cost more than, the, or than that, depending on the state tax or the federal law, the federal tax is just $1 for 20 packs of cigarettes in some states, while some are four thirty-five per pack of cigarettes. And I'm not saying there's anything necessarily wrong with drinking or, or, or doing smoking or whatever. I'm just saying that you know going into it, this is physically hurting your body. Drinking is hurting your liver. Smoking is hurting your lungs. You're doing something you know is going to hurt you in the long run. Paul was a thief, son was a thief, grandson's a thief, great grandson's going to be a thief. A lot of times people follow these generational curses and they just they continue doing what their fathers did. How about this one? Old men are singing praises to God. These people are singing praises to God. Their children are going to sing praises to God. Again, you follow these same things that people are going to follow what their parents do. In Exodus 34 it says, The Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in greatness and truth, keeping mercies for thousands, forgiving iniquities and transgressions of sins, and that by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children, upon the third and the fourth generation. King, Second Kings 17. Howbeit they did not hearken, but they did, not, they did after their former manner. So these nations feared the Lord and served their graven image, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so they did to this day. So these people kept following what their fathers did. They didn't learn from their mistakes. They just said, well, my daddy's doing it. I'm going to do it too. You, know, you have to understand that your actions and attitudes will greatly affect your children and grandchildren. you got to keep a godly attitude. Ezekiel 16 says, Behold, everyone that uses Proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, As the mother, so is the daughter. And thou art mother's daughter that lo lo loatheth her husband and her children, and thou art the sister of the sisters that loatheth her husband and her children. 
Your mother was a Hittite, your father was an Amorite. The same thing with mothers. Some women see their mothers doing a certain thing, and they continue that as well. These daughters look like their mothers. There's a couple pictures here. This daughter looks like her mother. This daughter looks like her mother. I hope the daughter does not act like this mother. Or this one. Or this one. Or this one. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. And they shall have one shepherd. And they shall walk to my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land that I have given to Jacob, my servant. Wherefore your fathers have dwelt, and they shall dwell therein. Even they and their children are their children's children forever. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. It's saying that, you know, be a good example for your kids because they might follow what you're doing. See, here's the thing right here, Abraham and Sarah. Sarah's our example to obey our husbands. Of 1 Peter 3 says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your husband, that if any that if any obey not the word, they also without the word will be won over by the conversation of their wives, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. The same women obey your husbands, try to bring them to God if they're not if they're not believing in God. It says whose adorning let not be their cowardly outwardly adorning their plain in their hair or weed in their gold or putting on an apparel, but to be hidden man of God that with that with not corruptible, even with the ornament of meek and quite quiet sprite, <clears throat> which is the sight of the God of great price. So follow your husband, love him. See, because if you love your husband un you know, unconditionally, he's going to see that and want to love you back. That's why the Bible says that women are supposed to love their husbands and, and respect them and, and follow them and obey them because when you do that, your husband goes, wow, she's treating me so good. I need to treat her back the same way. I need to treat her really good. So after this manner, the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being a subjugation unto their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters are ye are, as long as we do, and not afraid with any amazement. This is basically saying that she's going to dress in a very modest manner, because she doesn't want to offend her husband, and she's going to follow her husband. She even called him Lord. This I thought was interesting. You know, it's like, honey, we're going to go into hostile territory. You're a very beautiful woman, and they may kill me to get to you, so tell them you're my sister. Now, Sarah didn't really understand this, but she obeyed Abraham. She probably didn't completely understand or like it, but she obeyed, and it worked great, and God chose her to be the model wife. Here's the movie The Patriot. When he says, lay down, you know, people, people, listen. And all throughout the, the internet, you see these things called, I told you so. I told you five seconds ago to slow down, and you didn't obey quickly. What if I told you, I told you so? The moment when you give someone advice and they don't listen to you, then you just sit back and watch everything you predict happen. I, did, I hate to say I told you so. The face when you when I get ready to say I told you so. See, you have to understand that. God's giving you a direction. God's giving you a purpose. God's saying, do this and things are going to work right. You have to listen to him. Psalms 81 says, But my people will not hearken to my voice. And Israel would not would none of they none of me. So I gave them up into their own hearts, lust, and they walked to their own counsels. God's telling us how to live our life. We can either listen or we can disobey. But if you disobey, sometimes bad things happen. Okay, oh that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. God's saying that if you would have followed me, I would have protected you when your people attacked you, but you didn't follow me. You chose not to. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat and with honey, and the rocks that should have satisfied thee. Genesis 3, God set up a chain of command. We need to follow it. The Bible has 31,102 verses. We need to read them and obey them, and if we do, things get better. 1 Kings 16, 27. And the rest of the acts of Omri, which he did, and his might he showed, which are not written in the book of the chronicles of the king of Israel. So Omri slept with his fathers and was buried in Samaria, and Ahab his son reigned in his stead. And in the thirty and eighth year of Asa, the of Judah began, Ahab the son of Amorah to reign over Israel, and Ahab the son of Amorah reigned over Israel and Samaria twenty and two years. And Ahab, the son of Omrah, did evil in the sight of the Lord, above all which were before him. 
And it came to pass that he had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam and the sons of Nabat. And he took his wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ebal, king of the Zendonians, and went to serve Baal and worshipped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more provoke the Lord, God of Israel, to anger him than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Not only did he disobey God, but he put up a, an altar of Baal and worshipped this, this Baal altar. And in the days did he tie the Bethite, Baal Jericho. He laid the foundations therefore of Baal and his firstborn, and set up the gates thereof and his youngest, the son Segev, according to the words of the Lord, which he spoke by Joshua, the son of Nun. And if you go to Joshua, it says, And Joshua so, saved Rahab the harlot alive, and her father's household, and all that he had, all that she had. And she dwelt in Israel even to this day, because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy on Jericho. And Joshua adorned them with the same time, saying, Curse be the man before the Lord that rises up and buildeth the city Jericho. Shall he lay the foundation thereof of his firstborn, and his youngest son shall be set up there in the gates of it. You know, this right here talks about how the curse of Jericho was fulfilled by this professor, right? It says, When Jericho was destroyed, a curse was pronounced upon the rebuilding. So the effect of the man who should do so lay the foundation of his oldest son and set up the gates of his youngest son. The verb build evidently applies to the resurrection of Jericho to his former uh, fortified strength, but it still counted as a city in Benjamin. You know, Israel had 19 bad kings in a row, then they got sent to be slaves in Assyria. And over the next 336 years, Judah had 20 kings, 12 were bad and 8 were good, then they became slaves in Babylon. Well, guys, that's the video, I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, you can email me or you can comment below. And make sure you like, share, subscribe, things like that. At the bottom right of the screen, I'm going to put the First Kings Bible Study. Top left of the screen is going to be the Exodus Bible Study. And then at the bottom left is going to be a video YouTube things you might like. I appreciate you guys watching and let me know what you guys think. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.